I normally do travel and after a lot of thinking I've decided I need to put this out. I am a, my name is Joyce Gangabert. I am based in the UK. I've lived here for 31 years and today's video is about the problems we as Kenyans are getting in the United Kingdom from our own Kenya High Commission, which is based in London. And my journey is a long one, and I do apologize because this goes through. I'm going to start at the beginning, but I'm going to be precise um, with the beginning bit. I just need to give you a feel, I need to give you a background of how my issues with the Kenya High Commission started. And it's not just me. I speak to Kenyans all the time, and. There's thousands of Kenyans who are complaining about our own Kenya High Commission. My problem started in 2019. I am a travel consultant and I take um, tourists to Kenya to see our beautiful country. And in 2019, um, I, as I was booking our tickets, I realized that my passport was coming to an end um, in June of 20, 2020. So this was in September, so I thought I'm going to get the ball rolling. So I tried to call Kenya High Commission um, in September of 2019, and I didn't get very far. So after about a week, I gave it up as a bad job. I thought I'll go to Kenya, take my, my clients to Kenya, and then come back and then sort it out. So around about February of 2020, I started trying to get hold of Kenya High Commission to try and get my passport renewed. Um, I wasn't having any joy with the online form. So I was trying to get hold of them to ask them, what do I do? And get some guidance from them. I, I could not get an answer. And I tried for weeks on end. I'd take, the whole, I, I'd take a whole day off work to stay at home and try and call them morning till evening. Nothing happened. And I kept trying and then I started getting frustrated because I had another group of clients who were taken to Kenya in September of 2020. My passport ran, was running out in June. So I started getting very frustrated and I took to social media and somebody saw my comment and gave me a name of a person. And I called this person and they told me, this is in June, they told me that it will take, I need to apply for my ID first, the new one. And because I didn't know about needing a new ID. And so he suggested that I get a travel document and go to Kenya. And I my passport. I remind we're only there for three weeks. I'm taking clients to visit Kenya. Um, so I didn't know how that was going to work, but somehow, but somehow I managed to um, get myself to Kenya and it got very annoying because even though I did get my passport and my ID in Kenya, I had got a cat who was trying to come up. Um, it cost me 50,000 Kenya shillings to get my passport and my ID. And I had to leave my clients unattended for three days and even though they didn't complain at the time, they do every so often say that I did abandon them for three days. And they couldn't understand why it would, it would take so long because that's not how things work over here. And I do apologize for this little beauty over here because she does, this is her sport <laughs> and I'm sad on her sport. So even though they didn't complain at the time that I was abandoning them, they do every so often say that I did leave them alone for three days. Uh, in Mombasa, I had to leave them a day before and go back to Nairobi. I left my clients alone in, in, Mombasa, in Mombasa after they'd had an experience with the police. 
and some rogue um, traders at the beach. Um, they were not comfortable I was in, but I needed to come back to the UK because I have a job I needed to come back to. So nonetheless, that's a background, that's a beginning. So I've come back and I start now trying to get my son an ID and a passport. This is now in 2020. So it's in 2021 that me and my son started the process of getting an ID. We could not get anybody to answer calls. Emails went unanswered. We went online anyway, filled out the document that he needed to fill out, and we booked an appointment. And that appointment was for months, months later. So me and my son get on a train, 150 pound each to London. And obviously, because it's COVID, for COVID, um, because of COVID re restrictions, and I do understand this bit, I couldn't go in. So I just hang around. Um, so when he's got in, he's told that his form has not been filled rightly, and there was a gentleman who helped him fill the form out. So that was all done and dusted, and he was he was told to wait for three three months to get his ID. So we've come back, we've waited four months, there's still nothing. So we start calling. Obviously, nobody picks up calls. We tried sending emails, nobody's emailing. Six months on, we're frustrated, we don't know what's going on. And I talked to somebody, I went back into social media and somebody saw my comments and offered to help me. So they found out that... Um, there was a mistake in the, fo in the in the forms. The names did not match. And that's why he hadn't got his ID. And it was still in Kenya. But the Kenya High Commission did not bother saying anything to us or sending us an email. So at this point, the first person who, who helped me out, I managed to get his number and I called him and he looked and he said, yes, that was the case. So we, this was now in 20... 22. In 2022, we, we got all that stuff sorted out. We got everything sorted and he resubmitted um, the forms again. Again, another trip to London at £150 a pop. Um, and to this very date, my son doesn't have a clue where his ID is. Last year, I took a week off and I was calling every single day and I do have recordings I've recorded this anything I'm saying today I can back it up with evidence I ha I call every single day from nine o'clock to 1 30 and from two o'clock to 5 30 in the morning I'd be told there's five people ahead of you in the afternoon I'd be told there's three people ahead of you and that was the story every single day my son has no Kenyan ID. Even though the Kenyan government says that everybody needs to have an ID, he doesn't have one. And it's not because he hasn't tried getting, he has tried getting his ID, but we're not getting any job from Kenya High Commission at all. We've tried sending emails, no replies to those either. We've tried sending a letter, no reply to that either. And I'm not the only one with these issues. All you need to do is go on to social media. And you'll see people's complaints. There's thousands and thousands of Kenyans out here struggling. Kenyans, the Kenyans who live as far as Scotland and Wales, and these are places that are far to go, and we all have to go to London. So our question is, what is the point of the Kenya High Commission in London? Because they don't answer the phones or pick up or answer emails or letters. What what is the point? Because I believe that the job the, the the purpose of the Kenya High Commission is to help the Kenyans in the UK, but obviously they're not. And at the end of this video, I'm going to put some snapshots of people's complaints from social media. And if anybody needs any evidence, I've got evidence backed up. So if there's anybody out there who can help solve the situation and the Kenya High Commission, please feel free to reach out to Kenyans. And that, there's also a mobile number there which nobody answers. Most of the time it's switched off. Um, I've had a friend's mom stuck at the airport 
because of the e-visa e e e well, website. Now, that's something else. I take a, a super, um, I take tourists to Kenya. Most of them get very frustrated with that form because half the time it's hanging up, it's freezing, you've got, and then you've got to end up starting again from scratch. Eventually, they come to me and tell me, last year I had one couple say they want to cancel their trip to Kenya because they, they just couldn't work out why they couldn't get the visa from beginning to end. In 2020, I sat uh, it took me a whole day to apply for eight visas for, for my clients, eight, because that website, half the time it's freezing, it's dropping off, and every time you have to start at the beginning. So these problems they're talking about now, they're not new. They've been there for a while. They've been used as an excuse. And sorry, it sounds like I'm ranting, but since 2019, you can understand why I'm upset. My son has a daughter who's never been to Kenya. He wants to take his daughter to Kenya to meet his grandmother. He can't do that. His new family want to, want to take him to Guyana to see where they've come from. He can't do that either. He can't leave the country in any shape or form. If there was a problem, he can't go. He's stuck. And all because the Kenya High Commission is not doing what they were put there to do. So please, if anybody knows what we can do or what can be changed please feel free and reach out to kenyans and it's not a case of if i want something then i've got to take to social media every time there's thousands of us so we are going to take to social media we, we don't need to go to that point kenya high commission has been put there for a reason and a purpose to help us solve our problems the IE things like visas, and again, that's a problem. The visas, that form, they need to, they need to get that working properly. So please, 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 I am reaching out to anybody who can sort this problem Kenyans are facing, and not just me, because I've, what I've seen is if you complain a lot on social media, they ask you to send them a message. What about the other thousands of us, or the other thousands of them who need help? So you, you reach out to one or two people. And I've had excuses like there's more Kenyans in the UK today than there were way back in the early 2000s. Yeah, but that means that you increase your staff, for starters. If it's your website, get a bigger server. And if the one you've got is the biggest, get another one. You can have more than one server. Um, everything we're hearing out here is all excuses, excuses, excuses. Um, I saw that they went to a city uh, down south and they were asking people with issues to go. Okay, that's them. What about those of us who are in Leeds? In Milton, Ke in um, um, Scotland and Wales? Well, are we all going to go down to that one city down south? We can't all do that. We need to know if we need to have a problem. If we have a problem, plan yourself, you go to London. Once you do everything you need to do, go back and expect everything to else to happen. It used to happen in the 2000s, during the days of Honorable Moshemi and Honorable Gary. Things worked properly as they should. Sorry to name it, but, and I'm not going to apologize for it. Kenyans need answers. Kenyans need this problem sol solving. So please, please, somebody out there, do something about this, because it's not fair on Kenyans. Please.